Hello, this is Byrne, and if you're a smart and successful woman who's having a really hard time attracting an amazing life partner, on today's episode, I'm going to share with you five little known reasons why this happens, and more important than that, what are some things you can do starting today to turn the tables around and attract the man you want. Hello, this is Byrne. Welcome to another edition of BurnMendez.com. I'm going to start by sharing a statistic that's probably going to make you cringe, but going to give you a bigger context about what this problem is all about. A recent study conducted by four top British universities concluded that for every 16 points that your IQ as a woman goes up above the norm, you have a 40% lower chance of getting married. But when the same is true of a man, let's say my IQ goes up 16% above the norm, men get a 35% higher chance of marrying. Now this is not cool, it's unfair, it plain sucks, but there's two ways we can tackle this problem. One is to complain about it, the other one is saying how can we thrive? and beat the odds and that's exactly and precisely what this video is all about before i get started let me share with you that if you are interested in this topic and you want to go above and beyond what i'm sharing on this short tutorial into the transformation that you need to step into to create the results you want and attract the man you are interested in beyond intellectual understanding of all of this there's a free training if you click on the first link on the description of this video you'll see a page that looks like this enter in an email and you can start watching this master class right away Imagine that there's a pyramid. This is point number one. And on this pyramid, the more you go up, the fewer people who can match you at that level. That's just the way life works. Now, that wouldn't be the biggest problem in and of itself if point number two were not a fact in this world, which is in most societies, men tend to marry across and down when it relates to income. Meaning if a guy makes X amount of cash a year and the woman makes 30, 50% less, he's willing to get married. Most women tend to marry across and up for many reasons that we don't have enough time to discuss in this video. But if that's the case, if you find yourself at the highest pinnacle and you can only go up, then it's even more uh, restrictive than if you're willing to look and see more options around you. The third reason why this is such a big challenge for so many women today is because if you've used your mind to get more of what you want, you're super smart and you have that energy to make things happen, that energy to make things happen at work or in business, it's called masculine energy. It's not specific to men, it's just masculine energy. There's nothing wrong with it and it's awesome that you have it. The problem becomes when that masculine energy is something that you use to create a connection with a man or to date a man. When you take it upon yourself to do the same things you do to make things happen at work with a guy, the guy that you want, who's connected, who's masculine, who knows what he wants, who's looking for, he doesn't feel that thrill to pursue you and to make things happen. When you don't know how to relax into your feminine, when you don't know how to let a man pursue you, you're going to either attract guys who are seeking more of that protective energy from you, or you're going to discourage awesome guys from doing it. So something to think about. Now, again, many more ways on how to embrace your feminine on that free training I just referenced a little while ago. Th fourth reason why this happens is there's probably, if you are using your mind sharply, and you've been rewarded multiple times for doing it, your emotional muscle of vulnerability may not be the most developed. That's typically what happens with high achieving women who are super smart. That means that you either close your heart more than you need to, to make things happen, but when the opportunity arises and a guy connects with you, that heart is still closed, he's not gonna feel the connection, the spark, and the opportunity will go by without him asking for your number, uh, asking you on a date, or making a second date if he did go on a first one. The second problem that happens re uh, regarding vulnerability is if you push your emotions down a lot and you're so hungry for that connection, sometimes when a guy shows up, instead of your heart being closed, you open it far more than you need to. And that means that you share far more than is needed, you get attached more quickly, and then he either gets scared or he might hurt you and you're more in it than you need to at that point. Both of those imbalances and vulnerability are part of the challenge right now. The fifth reason why this happens is maybe you haven't made this a true priority, meaning you've put your career and you put other things in your life, maybe friendships or other parts of your family as a higher priority, but there comes a time where if you don't create the space now in your life, this might not happen. For example, I connect with women who seek out help who are sharing with me, hey, when I finally find that guy into my life, I'll start moving some of those extra things that I do away so I have more time with him. And the reality is, if you don't start doing that before he arrives, your lifestyle will not be conducive to a relationship that can thrive. 
and you may not even meet him because you're so busy doing other things. So being willing to make this a higher priority is part of what you need to do. Sometimes you have this as a high priority, but maybe the strategy you're following is not the correct one. Maybe it's more based on that masculine energy that I shared earlier instead of that feminine energy. Now, here's a kicker. What are things you can do today to start turning this around? Because we understand what the problem is. The first one is decide from your heart to go all in. What does this mean? This means that if you're not feeling enough motivation to go all in, you might do a future pacing exercise where you close your eyes for 10 minutes and you really picture your life five years and 10 years into the future. And you see who you're with on the weekends, who you're traveling with, what your Mondays and Fridays and Saturdays are like, uh, when something awesome happens at work, who you share it with. And if you're not super excited about that prospect, if it viscerally hurts you to know that 10 years from now, you might be in a worse situation than you're at right now, you might have more of an emotional why as to how you can make this a priority in your life. Number two is cut the open loops. There might be guys you're connecting with who are not awesome for you, don't want something deep and long-term, maybe something physical or a friend with benefits or just a guy who connects with you emotionally via text when you're lonely. But as much as you might think those things are harmless or neutral, they're negative in your love life. Here's why. Because let's say it's a Saturday night and you feel the pinch of loneliness. If you have a friend with benefits you can call up or a guy that you're connecting with emotionally via text and he removes that hunger for you, from you to do something else, you're still not getting what you want, but you're taking less action. And again, I connect with women who say, hey, when I find my guy, I'm gonna uh, part ways with these five guys that I'm connecting with and wasting time with. My message to you is do it the opposite way. Cut the open loops first, stop connecting with guys who don't want the same thing you want, who don't want a deep relationship, and let that initial pinch of loneliness get you a little harder. But as a result of that, be motivated to, be motivated to alchemize it into something more powerful in terms of action. Number three, Focus on transferring emotion when you connect with men. What does that mean? That means that you cannot transfer emotions you're not feeling. So the first step if you want to transfer more emotions is to be more aware of what you're feeling, asking yourself the question, what am I feeling more times a day? But more than that, doing things before you connect with men or put yourself in environments where you might connect with men that already enhance the feeling of gratitude, the feelings of aliveness, the feeling of connection, so that when you do go out there, instead of saying, hey, I have to do two things. Number one, figure out what I'm feeling. Number two, transfer it. You know what you're feeling and your only job is to transfer more of that through your voice, through your smile, through the way you move, through your touch. Number four, reevaluate your priorities in a mate when it comes to income. If you're at the highest step of the ladder and you've only considered guys who are as awesome as you are financially or more, I'd say change it slightly to not guys who are making any amount of money and maybe have a billion dollars in debt, but guys who have sound financial lifestyles, even if they don't make as much money as you do. I'd rather you date someone who loves what he does and is doing something awesome in life, even if he makes less money than you, than someone who makes more, who maybe isn't excited about what he's doing or doing things in a way that are not the most, the most conducive to a better world in order to get that cash. Fifth thing you can do is you can take my training. Uh, this, the thing that I started doing today is getting you into the awareness of how you can view life differently and what's the challenge and how you can start taking some actions. If you wanna go way deeper into the transformation of how you can emotionally embody the things I'm talking about, all you have to do is click on the first link in the description of this video Enter in my email and you can start watching my free masterclass, My Dating Cure, how to go from being high achieving to also becoming highly pursued by quality men. Again, first link in the description will get you that. If you like this video, click like or thumbs up. And if you like content like this, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes when they come out. Thank you so much for connecting with me and allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your phone. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.